I'm asking all believers to please pray for the protection of our President Donald Trump, especially in the coming weeks and months ahead. I feel extremely heavy even posting this, but I've been very burdened by the Lord over the past several days to share it. What the Lord showed me in this dream I'm about to share, it appears the first part might very well be in the beginning stages of being fulfilled in light of the post-election Supreme Court hearings that are taking place. The second part of the dream, which is extremely alarming, I fear that remaining silent could have far too grave consequences when in fact the Lord instructed me to speak and petition believers to stand in the gap and to pray. I had this dream the night of September 1st, 2020, just 17 days prior to the death of Judge Ruth Bader Ginsburg. After her passing and considering the nature of the dream I'm about to share, I had assumed this dream was prophetic in terms of her death. But in light of the past week's events, I now feel confident that this dream was indicative of what is happening right now in our nation. The reason I didn't post this dream when I first had it back in September is because I never intended to ever post it at all. The Lord has given me many prophetic dreams throughout my life, but it wasn't until this year that the Lord began to command my spirit to speak. And while I delayed and struggled before the Lord with even sharing this word, I don't want any blood on my hands for lack of obedience to warn and to appeal to believers to pray. So I'm doing this solely out of an obedience to the Lord. That being said, I'm not sharing this with hopes of any interpretations to come my way. I'm solely appealing to you to please pray about what I'm about to share. So this dream I had, again, is on the night of September 1st, 2020. In the dream, I was standing in a large courtroom. I was merely a bystander being shown what was taking place. Although I've never personally seen the inside of a Supreme Courtroom, I understood in the dream that this is where I was. It was extremely large and had several levels inside the room. There were not many witnesses in there. All in all, probably about 10 people were in the room. It was mainly prosecutors, defense, and a single judge. I began to look around the room and I quickly noticed that every single person in the courtroom appeared to be dead by what looked like an execution style point blank head wound. I then saw the judge hunched over in his seat with a docket and pen still in his hand. As I looked around the room in disbelief, suddenly everyone began to come back to life. I was in shock and confused but it was quickly spoken into my spirit that what I was witnessing was actually a reenactment similar to those that are done in revolutionary civil war times and that they were doing this reenactment to try and determine what had conspired. I didn't completely understand what they were trying to reenact, but the next thing I was shown was a television screen and on it appeared Joe Biden. He began to speak and it seemed disingenuine as he was acting grieved over the recent news that President Donald Trump's life had been taken from him. And he proceeded to console America at the loss of our president. In the dream, I thought it was really odd that Biden, rather than Pence, who would normally be next in line to step in for commander in chief, wasn't, but rather it was Biden. In the dream, I began to get extremely enraged because Biden's insincere regret for our nation's loss just seemed so insincere. The next thing I remember was feeling a deep sorrow for Trump in my heart. But it wasn't for the loss of the nation, but rather for his salvation. In the dream, I just began to feel the weight of the absoluteness of the matter and began to plead with the Lord that I prayed that Trump was truly saved and that he was now in the presence of the Lord. It was then spoken into my spirit that Trump knew when he took the oath of office that this trip into the White House was one way, that he knew he was never going to make it out the other side, but that he understood his calling in this hour was far too great, that he believed what was at stake was so much greater than his very own life. 
and that if he didn't do what was necessary to fight against the corruption, there would be no nation left to live or die in either way. So he basically chose to be a sacrificed soldier in this war. And then I woke up. Now I'm not stating that this is the president's fate. I believe the Lord has confirmed the accuracy of the first part of the dream to me in order to establish a call to action on the part of praying believers everywhere that we would stand in the gap and pray divine protection around Trump's very life in these next several weeks and months ahead. I believe that the spiritual wickedness is only going to increase. And as attempts to expose the lies increase in the next few weeks and months, so will the enemy's attacks. Now, I'm not here to either debate nor promote Trump's character as a human being. We are all imperfect and yet, all throughout Scripture, God used, and still to this very day, uses the imperfect to accomplish His will. I'm simply being obedient to the Lord's instruction to petition believers to pray. Pray for the protection of President Trump. As Christians, our very way of life is being challenged, and we must act. And action is our prayer. We are at a tipping point. If America falls, the world falls. And what we will fall into, words cannot begin to describe. We are truly at a war for our very lives, for our freedom, and for our right to freely worship and openly exercise our Christian faith. Please, Americans, I pray that you understand this is not red against blue or Democratic against Republican. This is an unseen war of good against evil waging against our very lives. We the people are being positioned and pinned against one another. It is the ultimate divide and conquer strategy. I believe what we're seeing is the beginnings of a spiritually demonic force coming out into the open with his final move in full view. The battle that we are in, it is not against flesh and blood. It is against principality, spiritual wickedness in high places. And the weapons that we are to use in this war are not carnal, but they're mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. And our weapon, believers, in this hour is prayer. We must activate our faith, proclaim God's promises, and adhere to the word of truth, which is sharper than any two-edged sword. In prayer, a little over a year ago, before all this chaos began, the Lord spoke so clearly into my spirit these words. He said, the time is coming when casual prayer will no longer do. Christians, I believe that time has come. All of us need to be praying now more than ever before, praying without ceasing. God still has us in this fight. He hasn't removed us yet and for a reason. We have been deployed here to this world for a time such as this. And while this world is not our home, we must complete our mission. No, our hearts should not be vested here, but our hands and our feet and our voices should. Until the Lord snatches us out and he that restraineth is removed, we must press in and press in hard. Now is not the time, Christians, to raise the white flag and surrender. Now is the time to fight for the truth, to be heard, to stand up for what's right in the eyes of God and to speak out against injustice, knowing this that now is the high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. God has blessed us with freedom in this nation. He has blessed us with liberty. He has blessed us with wisdom and godly discernment and he has blessed us with a voice. Now is the time, like never before, to use it. And while the world may be falling into a deeper spiritual sleep, believers, we are not. We are awake and we are fully aware, and it is our duty as believers to stand in the gap for godliness and to wake and warn all those who will listen. As we see the day of the Lord approaching, rather than retreating, we should be pressing in with fervent prayer that God's will be accomplished because what the enemy means for evil, God will always turn around for good for those who trust Him. We might very well be in the last seconds before that midnight hour strikes and the church is raptured out, 
but we are expected to work equally as passionate and fervent in this, the last hour, as the very first believers worked in the days of Christ nearly 2,000 years ago. Believers don't lose hope. God is still on his throne and none of this is catching him by surprise. We have one goal and one goal alone in this hour and that's to lead as many as we can to the cross for by no other way shall we enter in and out of this fallen world. How do we do this? We shine his light. The enemy is no match against the explosive power and might of the Word of God. Use it, shine it, pray it into your individual lives, pray it into your communities, and as one voice looking up, pray it into our nation. Let us pray for one another. Let us pray for our lost family members that they come to know the Lord while there's still time. And let us join together and pray for President Donald Trump's protection as he begins to press back against the evil. But most importantly, let us pray, Lord, let your will be done above all. God bless you and God bless the United States of America.